All right, hey guys, uh, thank you for watching the second screen mapper tutorial. This video is going to assume you already have watched the first tutorial and have a basic understanding of how screen mapper works. Now in the last tutorial, I showed you how to map your animations across a screen mapper project. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build a layout based on a supplied image and a few more cool features too. So let me just delete all of this. And with Screen Mapper open, I'm going to create a new project by going to the main menu and create new project. So in this tutorial, I want to build a layout based on a supplied image. Now, just to give you a preview of the image, here are the blueprints where we've got 14 different displays. We've got their dimensions and we've got an ID for them as well. And they're all in portrait or landscape mode. Now, back in Screen Mapper, we're going to call our project Screen Mapper Stage Design. Gutter can stay at zero. Uh, let's put snapping at 200. Edge detection is fine. Now, we're not going to need the canvas dimensions because we're going to be using a background image. And what happens is when you add a background image, it adds the dimensions, the dimensions default to the size of the image you've uploaded. Now note that the maximum size image you can import is 10,000 pixels, but really you should be trying to go smaller than that because the smaller the image, the better performance you'll get. Let's click OK. So now in our project, you can see we've added our image and we can toggle our image on and off with this button here with the eye or the shortcut eye. If we zoom in a little bit on the canvas, we can see our background image has the first display and that's 1920 by 1080. Now we can add this first display by either coming up to the toolbar and entering the width and height of the display. But I know that keyboard shortcut number three adds a display of 1920 by 1080. Now what you might have noticed is this has taken up the full canvas and that's because our image, the total size of it is 1920 by 1080. So it's not to scale. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this display down, zoom in a bit, move along, and let's try position it, match it up as best we can. And I'm just going to use the W, A, S, and D keys to reposition and get it as close as we can. And that's looking like a match. Cool. So now we've got our first display and it's in the right position, but it's the wrong scale. Now to get this right, really what we want to do is change the scale of the canvas and the scale of our background image to match the size of our display. Now don't worry, Screen Map has got you covered and it allows you to do this using the canvas scale tool. Now to use the canvas scale tool, you need to make sure you've only got one display on the canvas. So you should do this at the very beginning of a project. Make sure the display is selected and come up to the canvas scale tool and it should have its properties already in there. And we just want to enter what we want it to be. So the new width and the new height, which is what the blueprints require. Click add. And what it's done now is it's resized the canvas, resized our background image, and repositioned our, our display correctly. So now we've got a full 1920 by 1080 HD display. And if you come over to our project settings, you can see that our canvas width and height is a lot bigger, almost 13,000 pixels wide and over 7,000 pixels high. So let's add our second display. So this is the same as the first display. So what I could do is come over to the toolbar and on the X position, add 1920. Let's change the color to red and click add. And it's created the second display, an additional 1,920 pixels across. Or if I just delete this, we can duplicate our displays and that's using the holding shift and using the W, A, S and D keys. And we want to duplicate right, so it's shift D. And you can see I keep duplicating these displays, shift D, shift D. And if I want to duplicate down, I can do shift S. Now the next display is a portrait. So what we need to do is rotate them. We can come over to the toolbar and click the rotate button and that rotates them 90 degrees or we hit the R key and that will rotate it too. I'm just going to move this display over here. So number five matches number five and it snaps into place because we've got our snapping enabled. Shift D duplicates to the right again. 
and I'm just going to move this sixth display over to number six. Now the next displays are seven and eight, and I'm going to duplicate down with Shift S, move this along. Let's just change the label color. It's one we've not used before. Purple looks good, and duplicate to the right, Shift D, and that's put number eight into position. Now for nine and ten, we can actually duplicate multiple displays at once just by selecting them both, shifting D to the right, and then we can drag them really quickly and move them into place. Now I'm just going to select all of our displays and using the W, A, S and D keys, I'm just going to move them and reposition them into place a little bit more. Great. So the last ones I need to do are 11, 12, 13 and 14. And this is a small grid. Now we can add grids with the grid modal and that's on the toolbar just here. This is a grid of two by two, and each display is 1920 by 1080. And it's updated the total width and total height. I'm just gonna keep the X and Y position as default in the top left corner. Gutter value, let's keep it empty. Direction, I think, is across. And let's choose some label colors red and green and click add and that's added four displays in a grid going across and i'm just going to reposition those and they snap into place perfect so you can see in literally no time at all we've recreated our screen mapper template based off our image and all that's left to do now is save it and export to after effects so to export, come over to the main menu and click export to After Effects. We've just saved it so we don't need to save. And if we zoom out a little bit in our After Effects project, we can zoom out and we can see that Screen Mapper has created our Screen Mapper project with all of our displays. It's done all of that hard work and it's added everything in. It looks great and it's in no time at all. We come over to our animation composition and just drop in our circles footage that we, that we used to preview, scale that up a little bit and jump back to our preview layer, jump back to our preview composition. Let's hide our pixel maps for a second. And if we play through, it might take a little bit of time because the compositions are so big, but you can see that we've managed to map our animation across all of these individual screens. If I play this, you can see that Screen Mapper has built the project and it's playing and everything's mapped and it's looking great. Now, if we go into our composition settings, you can see that we've got, you can see that it's a big project. It's almost 13,000 pixels wide and over 7,000 pixels high. And that means it's going to take quite a bit of time to render. And if we zoom out and look about, you can see all of this empty space. And all this is taking time to render, but time to process and it's slowing down our, our project. Now we've got a fix for that. And we can, if we just delete our project and let's jump back into Screen Mapper and head over to the Preferences. Under After Effects tab, we've got a Trim to Displays button. If we make sure that's enabled and then go back and export the project again, and just zoom out, turn off pixel maps. Screen Mapper has reduced the size of the compositions down to the bounding box of all of the displays. So we've got none of that wasted negative space. And if we just go back, grab our pulsating circles footage, drop that back in and play it. It's playing a little bit faster. And we go to our composition settings window. It's under 10,000 pixels wide and under 5,000 pixels in height. So we have lost quite a bit, which we weren't using anyway. So that's really good. And that's hopefully going to increase those speeds. Now there's a couple more things I want to show you. Let's just delete this project again in After Effects and go back to the Screen Mapper Preferences and back into the After Effects tab. We've got a button for importing images. 
we toggle that on and come back and export the project from Screen Mapper again, what it's going to do is it's going to import this background image directly into After Effects. You see now we've got an additional folder called Display Assets. And if I just solo this layer, it's imported that image into our compositions in case you need to view it and check. Now, the last thing I want to show you is the pixel map preset. And you can choose to either import them or not. Uh, and again, that's via the preferences under the pixel map preset. And if we go back in each display composition, you get a shape layer called pixel map and it's got a pixel map preset controller on it. Here we've got controls for changing things like guides, the color, the stroke, the width, dashes, adding corners. If I toggle this, we've added corners. We can change the tiles, either via a custom size. We can make this 200. Or you can actually change the amount that you see so at the moment it's 10 by 10 grid. Let's make this 20 on the X. Or we could do um, 40 by 20. But it's going to automatically update everything for you. Let's just bring this back down quickly uh, to custom size 100 by 100. And we've also got the ability to change the color of each tile. Again, add borders to each tile. Loads of different customizable properties in there to suit your designs. And lastly, in case you missed it, you are able to toggle these on and off in the master controller in the main preview comp. All right, that brings us to the end of the second tutorial. I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching.